I thought was a young dentist, and I just hated management and all that stuff, then my first suggestion, go to classes, go to courses, learn management, learn leadership, learn those things, because what you're going to find, and I've talked it on some past podcasts, is you're going to find that when you do that, your productivity is going to go up and your EBITDA is going to go up. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Bruce B. Baird, and you're listening to the Productive Dentist Podcast. In this podcast, I will give you everything that I've learned over the last 40 years in dentistry, working with thousands of dentists. I'll tell you, it's not that my way is the only way. It's just one that has worked extremely well for me, and and I'd love to share that with you. So you too can enjoy the choices and lifestyle that productivity allows. More time for things you love, increased pay, better team relationships, and lowered stress. Let's get into it with this week's episode of the Productive Dentist Podcast. Hi, this is Dr. Bruce Baird with the Productive Dentist Podcast, and this is episode 104. And I thought it would be a good time to um, talk a little bit about something that nobody wants to talk about unless you're involved, and that's the DSO market. I just uh, got finished attending the DICOMA conference in uh, in Denver uh, this past weekend. And it's a, you know, I, I think this is something that's going to be around, you know, for a long time. And there were multiple uh, PDA doctors that were there. And it seems to be kind of the formula for uh, when a when a doctor is ready to retire or ready to uh, do away with uh, managing the practice, that they go and and decide they want to sell the practice to a DSO. And the the interesting thing that I you know was investigating, and I've I've been involved kind of looking at DSOs. I sold my practice 10 years ago to Heartland Dental, as most of you know. The reason I sold it was because I had started a couple other companies, a finance company, uh, Compassionate Finance, and, uh, and of course, Productive Dentist Academy has been going on now for almost 17 years. But So I just had so many other projects, I thought this would be a, a good time to do that. What I'm seeing is that's kind of interesting is it's it's almost um, I don't want to use the word everybody's coming up with a new idea, a new way of doing it. We're going to pay you four and a half x your EBITDA multiple. We're going to pay you six, but you don't get you know you don't you don't you don't get certain things. And I will tell you that you know you really it. it if you were going to sell your life's work, which I had that conversation with two PDA docs this weekend, if you were going to sell your life's work, wouldn't it be prudent, first of all, to talk to more than just one person, one group? Uh, my, my suggestion would be, you know, talk to five, you know, four or five or six different groups, look at their different options, look at the different things that they have available. Um, and because what you're going to find is, uh, every one of them has their own little twists and turns. And I get the questions all the time. Well, what do you think about this group? Well, they're good if it's the right fit for you. If it's, you know, if, are you going to continue to own a portion of the practice or are you going to uh, be selling the entire practice and working for the DSO with some upside potential with stock and, and, and those types of things? Uh, because those are really questions that you need to have a really clear understanding of and a clear answer of before you sell your life's work. Um, now, if you're out there and you've been, and I'm going to use another example. I've seen some docs that are 35, 40 years old that have, are selling. A lot of these guys are selling to the DSOs, but they're also influencers in the marketplace. And they've gotten deals where, you know, as they uh, tell their friends, you know, they make some additional revenue off of referral fees. 
So you need to be aware of that. Uh, so if somebody says, oh, yeah, I, I sold to them and you should, let me give you the information. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but you're going to be able to ask those people a lot of questions. Well, what do you like about it? Uh, are there any negatives? Are there any things that, that don't seem to fit um, in your practice? And, you know, those, those are going to be the kind of the questions to ask. But if I was a young dentist, and I, I always I tell a patient, this is what I'd do if it was me. But if I was a young dentist and I just hated management and all that stuff, then my first suggestion, go to classes, go to courses, learn management, learn leadership, learn those things. Because what you're going to find, and I've talked about it on some past podcasts, is you're going to find that when you do that, your productivity is going to go up. And your EBITDA is going to go up. So I tell this to anybody. um, If you're thinking of selling your practice and you're pretty committed to that, give yourself a three-year window and increase your EBITDA. Increase that productivity. It's going to do nothing but get better. And your take on three years of effort is going to be massive compared to what you've done in the past 15 years or 20 years. Uh, And that's really what Productive Dentist Academy specializes in. We take practices that are doing 800,000 to a million, and within two years, they're doing two and a half million or three million. Now, what I will say is some of the dentists uh, at that time decide, hey, I kind of like this and I'm doing very, very well. (laughs) So, and I may, maybe I don't want to sell anymore. So it, it is a... I don't know. It just gives you that three-year window. Now, if you're at that time where you're thinking about potentially retiring at some point in the future in, say, three to five years, another time where Productive Dentist Academy, you know, we take these docs and, again, grow the business for retirement. Uh, and anytime, anytime you focus on something, give yourself a three-year window of focus, because I can tell you after 40 years in practice, I mean, there were years that I was focused and there were years that I wasn't. I tended to be very much business focused anyway, and I always increased production. But a lot of offices go through these ebbs and flows, uh, kind of where things flatten out a little bit for a couple of years, and then they go to a couple seminars and they get excited again. And, and so it's a it's kind of an ebb and flow. The every seven year burnout, there, there's lots of reasons. But if you're thinking about retiring, if you're thinking about selling your practice, uh, if it's a med- medical emergency, something, of course, you're going to need to find somebody quickly. But most of the time, it's not. You just get fed up and you just say, okay, I'm selling. And I, I heard that from several people. But just don't get fed up for three years. Just say, I'm going to focus because that focus could mean an extra 500 to a million dollars to your bottom line in retirement, which gives you choice, which gives you uh, lots of things to look forward to. Plus, it kind of changes your overall behavior to something where I'm excited again. I'm going to grow this practice and let's see where it goes. So, you know, that that's another suggestion I have. Um, another suggestion is, you know, when you start talking to multiple DSOs, you'll have some that say, we pay you 25% of what we collect on you. Some say 30, some say 35, some say 40. Uh, you know, what What do you take? Well, I when I was teaching at, um, at Baylor to the freshman dental, I mean, not freshman, to the senior students on practice management, I asked that question, uh, 25%. 30, 35%, which guy, which would you guys like? They all raised their hand to 35%. And I said, but what if the one at 30% gave you unlimited new patients that you could see? Uh, or the one at 25% where you could have and, and had great financial arrangement options that they have so that more people could say yes to treatment. So you get to end up doing more dentistry. Um, you know, and in, in your own practice, when you're thinking about selling, you know, okay, how's that going to affect? What other add-ons do you guys have? How do you look at uh, case presentations? Do you want um, do you want patients to go through um, hygiene first, which you know, Productive Dentist Academy believes it ought to go to the doctor first. 
So these are just questions to ask. What I will tell you, if you're a if you're a butt kicking practice doing three and a half million or four million, I don't care who buys you. They're not going to mess with you very much. But if you're an eight hundred thousand to and now most of the practices that are being picked up by DSOs are in the million plus range. But you know, that they're going to want to give you advice and that's fine. Uh, and maybe you need it and they're going to give you some, they're obviously their overhead is going to be reduced. So these are all things to think about. Um, you know, what, what would change? Talk to some other people that have sold and use your own networking there. Find, ask some buddies, put it on a Facebook group. Does anybody know anybody who sold to, uh, Hartman? Could I get their number? Anybody sold to MB2? Anybody sold to PDS, Pacific Dental Services? Anybody sold to, and I could go on this list now for a hundred and for the entire podcast. I mean, there's probably 120 really active DSOs and there's more coming every week. Um, the, they, they say that there'll only be 30% of dentistry. My guess is it's probably be closer to 50% will be in a DSO environment. And another 50% will be what I would call a high value fee for service practice with a, a super GP and some associates. And so those are, again, just thoughts that I have along those lines. Um, again, what about upside potential with these DSOs? Uh, I have seen some where you get stock. Uh, as a matter of fact, I I probably made as much or more in the stock that I owned with Heartland Dental than I did uh, on the sale, which is really interesting. And, and uh, I continued to increase my production because I could focus pretty much on just that. Uh, I, I wasn't having to worry a whole lot about um, about office and how it was running and everything. Although don't don't be uh, don't be naive to think that you're probably going to keep doing the same things you've been doing. It's a lot of the regulatory, a lot of the HR, a lot of the um, additional things that you have to do that get taken care of in that DSO environment. So I, I, I like that uh, from that perspective. It, it does take some of the pressure off. Um, more things to think about with a DSO. Is there upside again, potential for stock? Um, I would be very hesitant if you have a company that says, we're going to give you, uh, let's say the, the most I've heard is a, maybe a six and a half X of your EBITDA. And then we're going to give you another opportunity down the road when we have a recapitalization or new money comes in at 13 X to sell another portion of your practice. So you're going to sell 60% of your practice at a multiple of 6x and then we're going to sell 20 more percent at a 13x and then we're going to sell another that's okay if they have a track record of doing that but if you have a new new group that's out there that's saying this is our plan i want to know first all right how many practices do you have out there oh we have 13 okay with big plans and they're spending big money and they have money back in them be careful because you know not all these DSOs are, are, are successful. So look at the fine print, look at all the things that you need to look at and talk to other people who have done it and ask those questions. And again, with Facebook and with those uh, social media platforms, you can pretty well find other people. Now, if they just send you their three picks, uh, the, talk to these guys. Okay, well, that's going to be good, but they're obviously going to be people who say this is an awesome, ex uh, awesome group, awesome company. And, um, you know, that, that's something to think about. And when you look at longevity of the company and they're promising, oh, you're going to be able to increase your, your, uh, your profits from this 50, 60 times, which I heard this weekend. I'm like, you're nuts, buddy. <laughs> I wouldn't jump on that bandwagon because first of all, their fiduciary, their responsibility is to under promise and over develop, over deliver, not to deliver them, you know, say, oh, we, you might get ADX. That's a sales technique. That's somebody selling you a bag of bullshit, you know, in my opinion. So, um, be careful with that, you know? So, uh, and if you have questions, I mean, I'm not the expert, but if you have questions, feel free to send it to me. We'll do a podcast on it. Uh, Bruce at ProductiveDentist.com, uh, as many of you know. And, uh, you know, we're going to continue to kind of support 
all the listeners with just different thoughts and different ideas of things that are on the forefront of dentistry. And there is a bunch of it. So uh, I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, I look forward to next week's podcast. If you're losing sleep over your business and feel like you're already overloaded, but know your business needs attention, you just don't know how, when, or where to start, you're not alone. The reality is many dentists are overworking themselves, yet their practices are still struggling to be as productive as they should be. This is not sustainable, and there is a better way. That's why PDA has developed a transformative new program, Business Impact Foundations to get you above the daily chaos and propel your business into an investment grade practice. Using easy to implement proven methods combined with a unique learning atmosphere, you can activate a strategic growth plan in just 60 days. If you want to clarify your vision, align your team and elevate the health of your community like never before, call us right now at 1-800-757-6077, extension 8, or head over to ProductiveDentist.com slash foundations to secure your spot. We have two sessions left this year and each program is limited to only 20 doctors. Just for our listeners, use the code 2021IMPACT, that's 2021IMPACT, all one word, for $700 off your tuition. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Productive Dentist Podcast. If you found this episode helpful, make sure you subscribe, pass it along to a friend, give us a like on iTunes and Spotify, or drop me an email at podcast at ProductiveDentist.com. Don't forget to check out other podcasts from the Productive Dentist Academy at ProductiveDentistPodcast.com. Join me again next week for another episode of the Productive Dentist Podcast.